We're right now at the Future Renting North conference here in uh, Manchester. I'm delighted to be joined by three of the landlord delegates. And ladies, so much to talk about in the sector. And um, first of all, I just wanted to ask you, how important is an event like this for landlords all get to get together and meet industry stakeholders and local government? It's really important to discuss views, share experiences, come up to scratch on legislation. We're in the business to do a good job and this is how we learn how to do it better. Indeed, and how about you? Yes, I came mainly to see Universal Credit and Andy Burnham's speech. I was lucky enough to catch Andy Burnham afterwards and had a word about homelessness because I, I do believe the councils and the government have no idea what's going on with the homeless situation. And you were one of the landlords that asked a question of Andy Burnham, weren't you? Yes, I was. And, you know, because he's, he's looking at doing legislation and I've been doing a lot of work to support my tenants, um, uh, you know, support a mother with children and support um, tenants with drug addiction problems. And um, he was very kind of negative around, you know, negativity of landlords, but we do an awful lot of work to support tenants. I know uh, another landlord here, she supports tenants with mental health issues, and we find it very, very difficult to get support services to help those tenants. So we end up taking that burden. And so it's not all negative what landlords do, it's very, very positive, and we need more support and we need more support services you know, that we can tap into, otherwise we're just going to, you know, we're exhausted. <laughs> no, I totally understand and one of the figures that Andy Burnham gave was that four out of ten properties in the private rented sector in Greater Manchester were substandard. Um, now, I wanted to ask the question, if that is the case, why aren't the council enforcing their existing powers? Quite. The people that come to these conferences are the people that are really interested in doing a good job. They want to know what the legislation is so they can meet it. And we can get quite furious at times that we're paying high license fees, but the people who don't care and don't come to these conferences and who don't uh, license their properties get away with it. And it seems to us counterintuitive that a licensing system is supposed to help tenants, but actually it's helping good landlords and, and the bad landlords are getting away with murder. Mm, no, I, I Yvonne had a good idea on how to, to cure that problem, didn't you, Yvonne? Uh, yes. The the landlords with the worst properties generally are taking DSS tenants and for every new tenancy I think the council when they see the housing benefit claim should ask a, an officer to go out and check the property before the claim is put into payment. That would ensure that any new tenancy is in a fit house for somebody and then that will cure the whole problem. Um, I, I don't believe that 4 out of 10 is genuine anyway, it is an estimate, I think it's a lot lower than that, maybe 5%, 10%. And that's because landlords, a lot of the time, because landlords aren't getting the support, they're getting the houses damaged by tenants, they're, getting, they're not getting the rent paid, they've got no money to repair the houses. We need to support the landlords and that will cure most of the problems. What was your reaction when Andy Burnham announced that they may be introducing um, this uh, good landlord kind of voluntary scheme? Uh, because clearly, I, I, well personally, I can't see any of the rogue landlords wanting to join such a scheme and the good guys are doing good stuff anyway. Yeah, I don't think it will help the situation because we're trying to um, cure the homelessness problem and somebody on the streets isn't going to check that that landlord is a good landlord. They're going to take any landlord they can. So the only way, and those people will generally be the people claiming housing benefits, the only way will be to check that property before the tenant goes in. Yeah, I think it's another layer of bureaucracy. Good landlords are self-policing on the whole. They do a pretty good job. Uh, I'm not against licensing. I've got nine uh, licensed properties and I'm quite happy to meet those standards. It makes me feel secure that I'm a good landlord. But it's not about the good landlord, it's about the bad landlords and it's about the, the wider issues of um, homelessness being a mental health problem. Yeah. People don't always want to come into a house. When they're in a house, then they, their behaviour, their referencing, it's all much more complicated. There's no simplistic solution to the homeless problem as far as landlords are concerned. Uh, I agree with Andy Burnham that uh, joined up thinking is absolutely essential, but another layer of uh, another layer of, of of good good landlording is is not really getting to address the real issues. I'd just like to say that I, I worked for Liverpool City Council for for many many years, and 
you know, that was many years ago, probably about 15 now. And at that time we were talking about joined up thinking, let's, uh, it's about time we actually had some and stopped talking about it. Do you feel that the, the, the pendulum has swung more in favour of tenants in recent times in terms of legislation? Absolutely. You know, I've, I've had really bad problem tenants that have put, put, put sort of 13 other tenants at great risk and to try and evict them was really, really, really difficult and they knew, knew how to use the law to ensure that they stayed where they were and that meant everybody else was in danger and I was uh, in touch with the, the council who brought in the antisocial behaviour but they could do nothing. So really, you know, we, we need more support and that, that tenant should have been in supported accommodation. So, you know, pay us to provide supported accommodation and we will, or provide it yourselves. You, you've been threatened by a tenant as well, haven't you? Um, yes, when I first started 15 years ago, we were regularly threatened by tenants. I've had people chase you down the street with machetes, crossbows, bricks thrown at your head. Um, that was general day-to-day -day things. Um, luckily, I've got new tenants since I bought the properties. We have to be very careful who we take on. There is no support from the local authority in any way. And you have to be able to evict the bad tenants. If I've got a block of five flats and one tenant is bad, I have to be able to evict. Otherwise, the other four people will have to walk away and four good people lose the homes. And it's the one bad person that should be losing the home. We need the powers to evict and quickly. Yeah, totally agree. Final question, ladies, as we uh, wrap it up here. Section 24, 3% stamp duty, increasing legislation. You've all been uh, in the landlord sector for many years, just by what you've said in the interviews. Do you feel that you want to continue in the sector or are you beginning to feel actually, you know, I, I, there's, there's nothing here for me anymore? If I could pay my capital gains tax, I'd sell up. Uh, yes, yeah, same. We wouldn't be in the game if we could get out quickly because there's no incentive to be there anymore. We work very hard for very little money, um, but still seen um, like bankers as the worst of the worst. Yes. Yeah, I feel like public enemy number one, and I don't feel that, that what we do and the service we provide, that that's warranted at all. Well, it's really great that to uh, have your contribution here today. And, you know, we are talking to the, the good guys here, actually, aren't we? The rogues would never even be thinking of attending this event. Um, and uh, thank you very much for taking part in the interview. It's been very, very interesting to hear your views on everything. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.